Thanks for uh, joining us today, Michael. Obviously, um, you know, the US tax reform uh, since late last year uh, has been in the news. I start with um, in the US, I mean, what's your assessment just in terms of the economic impact? Well, it's certainly going to add a extra stimulus into the, uh, the US economic story. The calculations we've done is this is probably worth about an extra quarter percentage point or so to US economic growth uh, this year and next. So we have seen some US companies respond by saying they're going to increase wages, which will help obviously on the consumer side of the, uh, the equation. And, uh, so there's some indica indications of extra uh, business capex uh, coming uh, coming through. The one kind of reservation uh, about this part of the story, I think, is this is happening at a time when a lot of indicators are saying the US economy is running at close to full capacity. So there is a risk that by adding extra stimulus, maybe what you're really doing is also boosting the uh, the inflation outlook uh, for the uh, for the US economy. What about on the on the fiscal side? Um, you know, the US is obviously already in uh, debt and deficit. Um, does this add any more to the risks on the fiscal side, do you think? Oh, certainly. I mean, it means the US budget deficit is going to be bigger than uh, it would have been um, otherwise. Uh, it's already a very large um, uh, number. Now, of course, it didn't really have much choice about that. Uh, well, they were very busy bailing out their economies, bailing out their financial systems, so rising government debt uh, was unavoidable. But the issue right now, I suppose, is, well, what if something else goes wrong? Is there the same ability to bring fiscal policy into play uh, as there uh, as there was in that earlier uh, earlier time, and the answer is uh, no. We've kind of fired off that uh, that cannon, and uh, we're not really reloading it um, the way we may be with interest rates, uh, with them returning back to to normal levels. The other issue here, I, th I think, to think about is uh, this fiscal stimulus uh, from the U.S. Uh, it'll help their economy for the next couple of years. Uh, it may produce higher interest rates than otherwise in the U.S. Uh, but that fiscal stimulus will be waning by the time we get into to 2020. Certainly uh, positive for next year or two. Uh, but we also need to think about some of those medium-term issues that are, um, are coming through as well. So um, you mentioned the, the wages flow through, which is obviously a, a critical uh, point in the current, current kind of environment. Certainly anecdotally, we've seen uh, a number of companies announcing that, that they will uh, increase wages. Um, how confident are you of the kind of flow through um, based on the numbers you're seeing and the analysis? Certainly in the US case, there have been uh, some indications of uh, wages growth uh, picking up. You can see the same thing happening in, in Canada, but you'd have to say the big picture overall is still one of uh, very weak wages growth uh, uh, pretty much everywhere, including, uh, including Australia. Weak wages growth, it's a global problem. It's noticeable uh, the number of central banks that are talking about weak wages growth uh, as, a, uh, as an economic uh, risk. So uh, in Australia, uh, we've heard the Government of the Reserve Bank um, uh, say we should be asking for, uh, for wage rises as an indication of how he sees the risk. What's your assessment in terms of, you know, people have talked about global capital flows changing fundamentally as a result of um, a US uh, lower tax rate. What's the implication for countries like Australia and, and globally? Well, there is a bit, of a bit of a global move here. So we've seen certainly the US move on uh, company taxes, uh, but in the UK they've announced uh, uh, tax cuts uh, coming through there as well as part of their response to the uh, the negatives uh, from uh, from Brexit. I mean, the bigger picture here, I think, is that uh, you know we need to get the business backdrop right, and there's all sorts of components of that. It's not just company taxes, uh, clearly getting a lot of attention uh, right uh, right now, but there is other aspects here. And if you get that right, uh, then I think what you see is businesses continue to expand. Uh, they hire more people. It will flow through uh, to uh, to wages as well. Now, what stands out as an economist, uh, well, we endlessly debate fiscal policy, monetary policy, and uh, and so on. But if wages uh, and taxes, uh, company taxes, are an issue, well, we should be debating tax policy uh, and uh, wages policy as well in in Australia. And I guess this is a point, uh, and you kind of make it in the um, EPO document as well that. There are a whole broad set of factors that influence um, business investment decisions, and I think you've you've talked about hurdle rates and and other things in um, the overview. So clearly, it's it's important to get a number of fundamentals um, right and and think quite creatively about about how you do that. I think that's right. It's not just one thing that will uh, give us the solution that we're looking for. It's going to be that mix of factors, the interplay that will give us the the results uh, in the in the end. And certainly from the business perspective, the hurdle rates are. Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the issues, uh, I mean, what the surveys tell us is that uh, most companies are using hurdle rates of somewhere between 13 and 16 percent. When you think about the current backdrop, it's low inflation, it's uh, low returns, low low yield backdrop, and 13 to 16 percent rate of return looks pretty ambitious. 
against uh, that sort of uh, backdrop. So uh, we need to see some uh, adjustment by business to the, the new reality, if you want to call it um, uh, that uh, as well, and that'll be part of the process uh, in uh, getting the mix right for business uh, and for the economy uh, as well. Michael Blythe, thanks for your time. Uh, Thank you. We really do appreciate it.